Hey, folks, welcome to market intraday analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This video for Friday, August 5th, 2011, is sponsored by Realtick. Let's get into the charts. A monstrous reversal on the charts today, folks. The markets fell out of bed again. The Dow was down well over 2%, close to 3%. NASDAQ was down over 3% at one point. I saw the NASDAQ well down over 50 points, even close to the 60, 70 point marker at one point today before a major reversal occurred. Now, basically what you had today was a non-farm payrolls report, which was actually pretty good. It came in at 117,000 gain in jobs. Uh, that's the non-farm payroll number. That was very positive. The markets gapped up on that, but the nervousness in Europe continues to be an overbearing phenomenon right now. And ultimately that came in and that crushed the markets and panic sellers came out. We saw the sell here. You got a bounce and then you got a flush and this flush took us down to a master level of a pierce of 118 on these spiders the SPY which you're looking at right now is the 118 level again that was a major level you want to see how major take a look at the daily chart right here look at this this is your pivot right here see this how it pulls back into that level bounces pulls back again and then rips higher in late 2010 that tells you that's major support. Look at it right here. It pierces it. That's where I initiated a buy today for my members in the research center. You want to take a free trial? Go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take the seven-day free trial of the research center and the intraday stock chat and join the pros. But bottom line, listen, it's a scary market. I'll be the first to admit that. The last few days were scary. But again, as a good trader will do, you have to strip out that emotion. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be a little bit more careful in this environment. I bought a smaller size position at that low when the markets were falling out of bed than I normally would do. But that's what you have to do. You have to understand that risk and utilize it appropriately. So again, with members in the research center, we initiated an actual long position on AK Steel. Let's take a look at that. AK Steel at 880, folks. And look at the bounce here, folks. You can see it right here. Here's 880. is right down here near the lows. And look at the bounce so far. This is the daily chart of AK Steel, by the way. I mean, talk about a massive drop. If I zoom in a little bit more, you can see what this thing has done. It's just oversold down here. It's due for a bounce. I got it again. And again, here's your intraday chart. Let me bring up the intraday chart for you guys. And there it is. There's your pivot low. And look at the reversal. Now, basically, it's just following the markets. But again, you could have bought the spiders, the SPY, which is the S&P 500. You could have bought an individual stock. Any individual stock would have done right now. They're all bouncing. Now, again, as I said, this market is fearful. I mean, there is panic out there. But you know what? When you see panic out there, that's when, believe it or not, it's almost time to say, listen, let me step up with a couple positions. Let me give this a shot. If we go back to the SPY, one of the major things I want to point out here, today, volume is going to be well over 500 million, folks. And it's a Friday. Usually, Friday Fridays in the summer are the lightest trading days. This will be the heaviest trading day of 2011. I repeat, heaviest day 2011. I do believe, based on a close in this general vicinity, the daily chart will signal a bottoming tail here. That is a reversal signal. Look at the size of that tail, too, folks. I mean, an unbelievable reversal tail. I do believe, short term, this is the low. The low will be in. Now, it's not going to be in forever. Eventually, we will take this low out, but you should get an early bounce next week. The reason why you had this reversal today is because there was work out that Italy and the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, reached an agreement that if they cut and balance their budget and do a budget amendment in Italy, uh, and they do it up to the standards of the ECB, the ECB will come in and buy their bonds, which is basically funding them that'll keep the um, the kind of the interest rates on those bonds relatively manageable for Italy at this point in time. That's a huge deal. That's a backstop. And if, again, if you were a member of the Research Center, I talked about something before Monday coming out like this to stave off the continued collapse. Because overnight, last Last night, Japan and China said, guys, get this stuff in gear into Europe. European leaders are having a conference this weekend. It's gonna, there's going to be some sort of bailout here. It's already in the works, and that's why you're having a bounce in this market right now. But again, folks, the spiders went down huge on the day. I mean, literally down to 116.86 from a close of 120. That's almost, that's basically a three plus dollar drop, three dollar and fifty cent drop after a five, almost six dollar drop yesterday. From the highs here, check this out, to the lows here, you're talking about a 15 percent decline. Now again, it's not that much at this point because we bounced, but from the high here to the low in two weeks, 15 percent decline essentially. That's amazing, folks. Absolutely astounding. All right, now again, the key is, do you have the guts? You have the guts to get the glory. And again, you listen, I'm not saying I wasn't scared in this market, but you have to fight that emotion. You must fight it. And I wrote a big thing to the Research Center members this morning and last night saying, hey, listen, 
We know the levels. We know the 118 level is big. We know the 115 level is big. I said to them, as, as everyone else knows in the research center, if you're a member or if you're a free trial member, I said, between these two lines, you begin to accumulate some long positions. Sure enough, on the Pierce, I took my first long position. It's now paying me off amazingly well to the tune of something like 6% at this point. All right, amazing. Just in intraday now, 6% gain. And I have a target of AKS of 975. I think it'll get there next week uh, pretty easily. It should easily bounce. That's target 1, target 2 is 1025 um, for well over 10% gain on this position. All right, guys. That's what you have going on here. By the way, head and shoulder pattern. Does everyone see the head and shoulder pattern that mostly played out? It essentially played out to close to target today um, right here. This is your head and shoulder pattern. And again, everyone that doesn't know what a head and shoulders pattern is, it's a bearish pattern. Once it breaks here... That's when it's in play as long as it doesn't get back above. Sure enough, look at the fall that took place. See the shoulder, head, and shoulder. And again, what you do is essentially look at the neckline. Neckline's actually right here. So it was actually a break right in this vicinity. That sends it all the way back down here. It's a general target. Target officially would be the 115 level, which is also a 0.618 retrace off the 2010 lows to the 2011 highs. But ultimately, if you get that close intraday on a flush, that's fine. And again, ultimately, yes, could we flush down? Will we flush down eventually? Yes, we will. But in the short term, that's good enough for government work, as they say. All right. Again, wild, wild week, folks. This is one of the wildest weeks I've seen since 2008, early 2009. It reminded me very much of that with the panic. But again, capitulation volume today. Look at the daily chart, folks. It's only 2 o'clock here, 2 p.m. Eastern time, and volume is essentially equal to yesterday. This is what you do call capitulation volume. Yesterday and today, absolutely capitulation volume. Well over 500 million both days in a row, folks. You do not see that much volume. Look back here. If I zoom out, look at this. When was the last time we had that much volume? Amazingly, right here. This was the last time we're going to get to this much volume. And it was actually more back then. This was flash crash, believe it or not. Flash crash pivot low for 2010 was put in right here. Could it be a low for this year? I mean, there's a small chance. I don't think it will be the low for this year. I think, again, you're going to get a bounce and then another flush later in the year. Uh, but I do think short-term, we probably have a short-term bottom in this market at this point. Uh, on any pullbacks in early in the week, I'll continue to accumulate a few long positions. Again, if you want the exact entries that I'm taking, that I'm posting, we're sending out text and email alerts when I do these trades, and these are swing trades for longer-term investors and mid-term investors, then you have to join the research center. Take the free trial. It's a free trial. Seven days free trial, folks. You can't go wrong, right? You can cancel before the end. You're not charged very simply. All right. In any case, let's go over some other charts. Some other charts that I happen to like. Take a look at Exxon, Exxon Mobil's daily chart here. Look at this, folks, on the chart. See this little pivot right here from the beginning of the year? Look at that. See this little pullback and then the move early in the year? Right there. That's major. That's a major support. That hit, look at the bottoming tail on ExxonMobil right there. If we zoom in, you can see it right there. Chevron, CVX. Let's take a look at Chevron. By the way, Chevron and Exxon are both up a dollar on the day. Look at the flush here. There was support here. It took that out. You want to know where the next support level was? See this little gap fill right in here? Take that line across. You pierced it. You actually went as low as this little pivot right down here as well. There it is. That was your next area of support. You tagged it. You reversed. And you're recapturing the 200, which is very, very significant in the charts as well. All right. Uh, other plays out there. Let's take a look at just some random charts. How about Apple Computer? Now, Apple Computer has been one of the stronger stocks, but it is a $15 reversal. I repeat, a $15 reversal off the lows of the day. Too bad it didn't get to the 50. That would have been my target for a, for a buying opportunity on Apple. Didn't get there, so no big deal. There's so many charts that are so cheap right now, you didn't have to stress over the fact that Apple didn't get there. You just move on to the next chart. Amazon, take a look at Amazon. Amazon, very close to this pivot high. Look at this. See these little pivot highs right here? Draw that line straight across. That's how you get your pivot high, uh, high, uh, low right there. Sure enough, it tags it. Look at how it recaptures the 200 moving average. I mean, the 50 moving average right there. I mean, they're amazing. Charting is so such a great thing because it really gives you a perspective. It takes the emotion out. And that's, again, what I said to the Research Center in multiple posts today. Is I, I'm giving them an overload of data during this crazy time to really walk them through this market. Because let's be honest, not everyone is used to trading through a market like this. Even regular traders aren't used to trading through a market because it's a rare market. So you have to really do a lot of hand-holding. You have to walk them through, have them understand. And that's what I'm doing here. Not only am I giving trades out, and which I'm ignoring emotion because emotion will get you in trouble and make you make the wrong decision, but I'm also giving them the education, the proprietary techniques 
to utilize and make sure that this is the best. We can perform as good as we can perform. Not going to mean you're never going to get stopped out on a trade. Every pe Everyone has a losing trade here and there. It's about maximizing, using the technicals to avoid the emotional decision, which will make you lose. And ultimately, if you go by technicals and levels, you will have a way higher winning percentage than losers, all right? And that's the bottom line. All right. Let's take a look at Goldman Sachs. Great reversal on Goldman Sachs today as well. Made a new 52-week low, but again is back above this pivot low. This is a double bottom that's very important for this to hold. I think it does hold that um, and probably starts to trade up. We had made a nice bottom in the chart and had a great move up. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six up candles there. Two, four, six. And then again, you start to come down. That's webinar methodology as well right there as we come down on the seventh plus candle. But nonetheless, look at the Pierce, how it was recaptured today as well. All right. Taking a look at JP Morgan. JP Morgan, same thing, trying to hold this pivot low from yesterday. Nice tail. I'd like to see a bottoming tail here, which is JP Morgan would actually have to close upwards of this area to me a bottoming tail. I'm not sure if it'll be able to do that, but that's what I'll be watching for there. Uh, what else do we have on the chart here? Um, some smaller stocks are so cheap, but you got to be a little careful with them as they're, again, you know, volume has disintegrated on a lot of the small caps, but they are available. Uh, one of my favorites down in this range is MOTR. You guys know I've talked about this one for a while. They have earnings next week, but look at this sell-off. It's amazing. From $32 all the way down to about $450, $440 at the low today. Now it's back to 5 bucks. That is an amazing chart. I do expect it to bounce on earnings, but I'm probably not going to buy it before earnings. It's just too high of a risk. Yes, I do think it probably bounces on earnings, but if it doesn't, I don't want to get caught in it. Uh, but a nice little bottoming tail on the chart here. We'll see if that a close above 5 is very important for this stock here. That would be a very impressive close above $5 there. All right. Uh, what else do we want to look at? How about we took, talked about AK Steel, which, again, I personally bought today down here, and that's already having a great bounce. I already have a break-even stop on that because I'm over 40 cents in the money already on a, a $9, $8 stock. But um, a, uh, U.S. Steel is another one. That's had a nice reversal off the lows. Southern Copper, take a look at Southern Copper. Very nice reversal. Although that's still pretty cheap down there. Not going to go near it now. How about USO? USO, great flush here. One thing to note here, I would have preferred if it came down here. It didn't, but nonetheless, it's due for a bounce. GLD, guys, is up just slightly on the day. The interesting thing about the GLD here is that you would have expected with the panic over the last two days for it to be shooting up, gold for it to be bought. That's not the case. Why? Because it's an overcrowded long trade right now, and smart traders have been selling. They know that once this market stabilizes, gold will come in, and I actually am bearish on gold here. Yes, not very many people out there are. I am short-term bearish based off of yesterday's pivot high. Gave out that call on the, on the hot charts, uh, the pro trader watch list is a bearish call based on yesterday, and sure enough, a gap up yesterday, reversal, and again, it's basically flat on the day today. All right, know your stuff here, guys. Let's take a look at the SLV. SLV is down again. 50 moving average is your support level there. I'll cover that over the weekend. We're going to do a no-hype live broadcast. And for those of you that don't know much about the research center, no-hype live broadcasts are live broadcasts we do. You see my charts live. You ask questions live by typing them in the box. I answer. We, con we go over future trades for the week and everything like that. It's a fully interactive environment of learning, trading, and everything. And that will be Sunday night. So I'm going to follow the future Sunday night with our guests in the research center all our members in the research center can log in that's 9 p.m also early next week i have a hidden gem that i'm going to release folks i'm not sure if it's going to be monday tuesday or wednesday yet but get involved i'll release that early next week you want to be involved because again the last hidden gems within two weeks they were up an average of 25 to 30 percent Within two weeks, 25 or 30 percent. I gave out five because they were all Chinese stocks. It was a no-brainer. This week, this month, I'm going to do one specific one, but I have it, and it's a great one. I think longer term, it's probably going to return 50 to 100 percent over the six-month period or so. It should be amazing, folks. So again, that'll be next week for our Research Center members. If you're more of an intraday person, you want to know what's going on intraday, then sign up for the free trial of the chat. I recommend people doing both free trials. Might as well. No harm, right? They're free anyways. As long as you cancel them before, there's no, you're not charged. If you want to keep one, you can keep one. If you want to keep both, you keep both. That's fine. But ultimately, you might as well get as much as you can, get, especially during this pivotal time, folks. If there's one time to be involved and understand what's going on in the market, this is the time. All right. Enough said. Crazy market, but great market. Congrats again. We had traders that picked up the spiders at the Pierce of the 118. They're now up literally almost $3 on the SPY. A uh, huge pounce there as well. Dow Jones Industrial Average is having a monster reversal day as well, up 90 points. NASDAQ is still slightly weak, down 6. S&P's up about 6 on the day. Take care, guys. Again, come join that free trial here at InTheMoneyStocks.com.